guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're doing a home DIY video. We're going to make this beautiful chandelier that I have up in my craft room. And you guys are not going to believe this, but this only costed me $6 to make. It is a little bit of a lengthier project, but I promise you guys the result is totally worth it. Now I have a light fixture installed in this and it is on my ceiling and linked to an actual light switch in the wall. I will show you guys the materials that I got in order to do that. And with the light switch and everything, it really only cost me $15, so it really was not that much. But it also depends on how much cording you're going to need to get to the ceiling. However, if you just want to make the chandelier without the light, it will only cost $6 to make. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting with materials, we're going to need some E6000 glue, a hot glue gun, and some hot glue sticks, long nose pliers. You'll also need a hobby iron kit or a soldering gun. I got this kit from Home Depot. I do recommend getting the same kit just because the little spare heads that you see here are really useful for kind of decorating and making the job a little bit easier. The other good thing is that it is a plug-in, so you don't have to worry about using butane and then storing it in your home. And we also need some wires. I got this from the Dollar Tree. A plastic ball, I also got this from the Dollar Tree. A plastic serving plate, and again, this is also from the Dollar Tree. Three packs of these plastic spoons, again, I got this from the Dollar Tree as well. If you're going to be adding the lighting fixture, you're going to need an extension cord based on the length that you need for your room. A socket adapter, you can find this in the electricity aisle. And a socket splitter, you can also find this in the electricity aisle as well. To get started, we're going to make the base for the chandelier first. Keep in mind you're going to need a 24 hour wait time for this part of the project. And firstly, we're going to match the middle of the plate to the middle of the bowl. So the best way to do this is you're going to match this circle right here in the middle of the bowl to the same circle you'll find on the plate, which is this right over here. Using the E6000 glue, I'm gonna go ahead and put a lot of glue around the edge of the bowl, as well as focusing in the middle of the bowl as well. Then we're just gonna go ahead and position the bowl to the plate right in the center, and then apply some pressure in the middle. And that is your finished base, so we're going to put that aside to dry. Now what you can do while you're waiting for that to dry is we can actually work on the actual crystal pieces per se. Uh, we're going to make these out of spoons. Now out of this whole spoon, the piece that we're going to use is just the handle, so we're going to cut this part. We can't use scissors because it's going to shatter the spoon, unfortunately. So we're going to use our soldering gun or wood burning kit. And I'm going to change it into this head right here, which comes with the kit that I'm using. This is just a little easier to slice that piece off. Now to slice it off, we're just going to push down on it. And you can see that this cuts right through it really easily. Again, you're just going to go right through it. I'm going a little bit above the three lines that you see right over here. For these crystal pieces, you can leave them plain like this. Or if you want, I'm going to show you guys how to actually decorate these using your wood burning kit. I have this pattern right here, which is kind of like a nice crisscross. And then I also have this, which is the pattern that I use, which kind of reminds me of um, like a wood pattern or like a waterfall type of feel. To decorate, I'm going to change the head to this head. You can see it right here. Starting with the pattern that I chose, it is very simple. It's just like a wooden or waterfall design. So you're really just drawing lines straight down, really random lines. No need to be perfect in any way, just because you're going to be far away from it anyway. This just kind of creates that texture to kind of reflect light. And on the bottom, you can see these lines here. So what I did is I just drew a couple more lines on here. Make sure you guys are really careful with this. This is super hot. I'm not even kidding. I dropped a piece of hair on it and it just burnt to dust immediately. 
Now for the edge, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to press down little, kind of like in little knobs almost, and it creates this really nice textured pattern on the side of each piece. This is a little bit more tedious, but I do love how it reflects the light and it does kind of give it a little bit of a pattern, I feel like, when you actually turn the lights on. So I think it looks awesome. For the next design option, we're going to do a crisscross. So you can see it is pretty simple. You're just going to draw uh, one line down. It's kind of like the look of like a baguette, I feel like. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about a baguette. I guess I'm hungry. But afterwards, you're going to go back and crisscross around the other side. And that's going to create a really beautiful crisscross. I don't think I really crossed over on this one, but either way, I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Now on the edge, you're going to do the exact same thing as the other one. So you're just going to press down little knobs to create that nice, beautiful texture around the plastic edge. And the outcome is going to be this beautiful Tiffany-esque style. Next to make the hole, we're going to use this attachment piece so that way it's a little bit easier to punch holes in it. And you can see it just goes in just like butter, so it is super simple. While you're waiting for it to dry, if you can hold it steadily, you can also start punching holes into the side of the bowl for attaching it. Uh, what I find if you're using the same bowl that I'm using is if you space them out so you have one on the larger piece of the bowl and then one in the thinner piece of the bowl, it kind of spaces everything out perfectly. If you are not using the same bowl, make sure not placing them too tightly together. Otherwise, when you have them dangling, they're going to overlap each other and it's not going to look very pretty. Now with the plate, you're going to do the same thing and you can see it's really, really easy. You literally just punch a hole down and it melts it immediately. And make sure when you are doing this, you are pulling the metal piece right back out right after because if you do stay there, it's going to burn a whole edge off and that's the last thing that you really want. If you're adding a light fixture, this is going to be the next step. If not, then you can skip this step. So this is very simple, really. Uh, so you can see I have the socket adapter and the split socket here. And the split socket is much bigger than the regular socket adapter. So what I'm actually going to do is have the split socket hold up the chandelier. And that way, if I want to remove the chandelier, I just have to twist the split socket off. And then I can remove the entire chandelier. So if you really think about it, all I really need is a hole the size of the socket adapter right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to outline the adapter. So that way I know how big of a hole I'm going to be soldering off. To burn off the hole, I'm sure there's a better way to do it. However, I'm just going to do it this way. If you guys have a better idea, feel free to comment below. But for me, what I'm going to do is I drew the hole. So I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole directly on the line of the circle that I drew. And then I'm going to be able to just pull that piece off. Now this piece is actually quite thick, so it only took off the top piece of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do step one again, and I'm going to go ahead and pull off the bottom piece as well. Now if you have a wooden table like I do, just make sure you pick up the plate so you don't burn your table off. Uh, I do apologize for Luna's little visit onto the screen. She does very often get curious at what I'm doing, and then she decides to kind of watch me up close, even though I'm filming here. So she has no respect for the screen, or maybe she just really loves you guys, so she decides to visit very often. 
So now that you see that it's done, I'm going to go ahead and try to put that socket adapter through, but it is not the cleanest edge, so I can't put it through yet. So the best way to clean this up, I find, is that I'm going to use the soldering gun again, and I'm actually just going to kind of push it around the edge to kind of smoothen it out. It's going to burn off the edge completely, so this kind of cleans it up and also takes off any extra pieces that's preventing the socket adapter to go through. So after I cleaned it through, you can see that it goes directly through. And once we put in the split socket, it's going to be able to hold the chandelier up. To attach the pieces of the chandelier, we're going to take a one inch piece of wire and then bend it right in the middle to form a L shape. Then we're going to stick it in from the outside towards the inside. And then we're going to place the chandelier piece on there. Make sure it's facing inwards because when we flip this down, you're going to want the outside facing outwards. Next, we're going to just kind of bend it in and then we're going to close it up with the pliers and that should attach it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and attach the rest of these pieces onto the bowl. Make sure when you're doing this for any part of the thicker part of the plastic you may want a little bit longer of the wire and also feel free to kind of bend it inwards a little bit so that way you make sure they don't come off. If you make them too short when you actually flip the chandelier over it gets a little too heavy or you trying to straighten everything up you might pull some of them off. However, if you want to, you can definitely use a longer piece of wire so it stays on there. From afar, the longer pieces, I can't notice it just because the light kind of conceals it and there is so many pieces of those plastic, then it kind of hides it pretty well. On the plate part of this chandelier, we're going to go ahead and attach smaller pieces of wire just because it is a much thinner part of the plastic and we're going to do the same thing all around. Now as I mentioned before this can be a pretty lengthy project so it's definitely one of those projects that you may want to grab a laptop or sit in front of a TV while you're doing this and of course because you are working with a lot of wires you may want to work with a thimble as well if you like. I don't like working with thimbles, so that's the only reason why I don't have it, but my finger did kind of hurt for the next day or so. So just be careful with that, and then if you want to use a thimble, feel free. Next, we're going to apply the holes for attaching it onto the ceiling. You can put these holes pretty much anywhere, but I'm going to put this in a triangle shape. What I'm going to do is puncture two holes because I'm going to use those wires again to have three wires going up to hold it. I'm going to install three hooks onto the ceiling to hold it up. I just wanted three wires because I want it to be able to kind of balance everything and I wanted enough support to make sure that the light bulb is not going to drop on my head at any point in time. For the next part, we're actually going to use the spoon pieces to create kind of like a petal on top or crown per se. I just place these on top just to count how many of these spoons I need. Next, I'm going to take each pair of spoons and I'm going to put glue on the base of the spoon and I'm going to just hold it right there to kind of create that nice petal effect. For this part I'm using the hot glue just because there will be no pressure placed on these pieces. However, please make sure that when you are gluing that base to the plate you are using the E6000 glue because the hot glue will not be able to hold that together in the long run. So make sure you're using the regular E6000 glue, not the hot glue for that. For this project, right on this part, you can put it any decoration pieces. You can use hot glue if you like. I just wouldn't put hot glue for anything that's going to have any type of pressure or strain against it. Now just to do the finishing touches of the chandelier, we're going to go ahead and attach these petal pieces. I'm just lining these up against that base circle on top of the plate. I just didn't really like the chandelier flat out, but if you want it just to be flat, you definitely can. In that case, then you don't have to do this part. 
And I also kind of did the petals to hide um, the wiring behind it too. So it did kind of help it hide a bit. Now for this petal part, after you finish putting the base crown on here, the next part we're going to do is we're actually going to put more spoons right in between each of these pieces. So you can see here on the next part, I have a just a regular spoon I'm going to place in between each one. So it's kind of like a petaled effect and we're just going to put that all around. Like I said, this doesn't have any strain on it, so it is perfectly fine to use hot glue for this piece. And we're going to just put it all around. If you need any more height to this, you can definitely add a extra row on top of this as well. So that concludes today's tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I thought pretty long and hard just to kind of make sure I come up with a project that was extremely affordable as well as practical as well. If you guys do choose to use the lighting like I did, please make sure to use LED bulbs so it does not overheat against the plastic. And then also use smaller bulb sizes so that way it does not press up against the plastic and start heating up as well. Aside from that, if you guys like this tutorial, be sure to give me a nice thumbs up. It does let me know what type of videos you guys like me to make. And then also, if you guys like to join the family, be sure to click that nice subscribe button. Aside from that, follow me on Instagram at Norris Chan. And you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.